This is part 116 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss vendor functions in SQL Server. We have different categories of vendor functions in SQL Server. We've got aggregate functions. Examples include sum, count, min, max, etc. Ranking functions like rank, dense rank, row number, etc. And analytic functions like lead, lag, first value, last value, etc. With all these functions, we can use the over clause. Over clause, when used with these functions, defines the partitioning and ordering of rows that is a vendor for these functions to operate on. Hence, these functions are called vendor functions. The over clause has got these three arguments which define a vendor for these functions to operate on. So this order by clause defines the logical order of the rows. Partition by clause divides the query result set into partitions. The vendor function is then applied to each partition separately. Rows or range clause. This clause further limits the rows within the partition by specifying start and end points within that partition. So far in this video series, we have looked at examples of using order by and partition by along with the over clause, but we haven't looked at any example of using rows or range clause. If we don't specify an explicit value for this rows or range clause, then it's going to take up its default value, which is range between unbounded preceding and current row. Let's understand what this value means with an example. We'll use this employees table in this demo. We want to retrieve name, gender, salary. Along with these three columns, we also want to compute the average salary and display that against every employee row. Now, to compute the average salary, we use average function. So average of salary from employees table. So when we execute this, we get the overall average, which is 5450. So we want this number to be displayed against every employee row. So let's use this average of salary function. And let's use our favorite over clause along with order by salary. OK, and let's give this column an alias. Let's call this average. Let's execute this and see what we get. So we expected that 5450 be, to be displayed against every employee row, but look at what we got. We got you know, a different average salary for every employee. Only the last employee row has got the correct average, which is 5450. Now let's understand how this average value is computed. The first thing to notice here is that we are not specifying an explicit value for this rows or range clause. So since we haven't specified any explicit value, it's going to take this default value, range between unbounded preceding and current row. Let's understand what this value actually means. Now, let's say this average function is being applied for the second row. Now, in that context, let's understand what this clause means, this value means, range between unbounded preceding and current row. So for this average function, the range of rows are going to be between unbounded preceding and current row. Now, we know what is current row. Current row is the row for which you know the average is being computed. Unbounded preceding means the vendor for this average function starts at the first row within the result set. Okay, now this order by clause is being imposed on the rows in this employees table. So that's our result set. So within that ordered result set, unbounded preceding means the window starts for this average function at the first row. So the rows range is between unbounded preceding, that is the first row within the result set, and current row. So when it is on the second row, the range of rows for the average function you know, is the first row and this current row. So it passes 1,000 and 2,000. So the average of those two rows is 1,500, and that's what we get. When we are on the third row, you know, the range of rows is between the first row and that row. So it passes all these three values, average of 3,000 plus 2,000 plus 1,000, you know, totally 6,000. When we divide that by three, we get 2,000. That's how it's computing average at the moment, and that's because of this default value for this rows range clause. And if you look at the last row, it has got the correct value. And how is that possible? Because you know it's going to compute the average of all these rows, you know, when it came to this tenth row. Okay. Now we will have the same problem whenever we use any of these window functions that we have. 
because of this default value for that clause. Okay, so let's look at, for example, count and sum. And let's give these columns aliases as well. Let's call this sum since that is a function name. Let's wrap it with a pair of square brackets and let's change this to count. All right, so let's execute this query and see what we get. Look at that, count and sum also work in the same way. So when it is on the first row, it says the count is one. When it's on the second row, both the rows are passed, so the count is two, so on and so forth. And sum, same idea. When it's on the first row, it's thousand. When it's on the second row, both the rows are passed because the default value is unbounded preceding and current row. Okay, so we get 3000 when we are on the third row, you know, 6000 and it goes on. Now, how to correct this? Now, to correct this, we will have to somehow tell to these window functions that the window of rows that they have to operate on starts at the first row within this result set and ends at the last row within the result set. Now, what is the default value? Range between unbounded preceding and current row. Now, I'm going to change that to rows between unbounded preceding. So what does unbounded preceding means? That means the window starts at the first row within the result set and we want the window to end at the last row in the result set. And the way we tell that is by using unbounded following. Okay, unbounded following means the window ends at the last row within the result set. So let's copy this and paste it for all the three functions and see what happens. All right, so let's execute this and look at what we get. Now we get the total count, total average, and total sum. Okay, now at the moment we don't have any partitions involved. If partitions are involved, then the meaning of this is going to slightly change. Now let's actually involve partitions. So let part, let's partition this data by gender column. So let's copy and paste that for all the three functions. All right, let's execute this and see what we get. Look at that. Now these functions are applied within that partition and rows between unbounded preceding and unbounded following in this case means, unbounded preceding means the window starts at the first row within that partition and unbounded following means the window ends at the last row within the partition, not within the entire result set. If you don't have partitions involved, then unbounded preceding means the window starts at the first row within that entire result set and it ends at the last row within the um, entire result set when you use unbounded following. All right, now let's look at one more example. Let's say, you know, I want to compute the average of the current row and the row preceding that, only one row preceding that and one row following that. Basically, here is what we want to do. So here is our first example where we are not specifying an explicit value for rows or range clause. Our second example where we are specifying an explicit value for rows or range clause. So rows between unbounded preceding and unbounded following. Now what we want to do is compute the average salary of the current row one row preceding the current row and one row following the current row. That means, you know, for example, when we are on the third row, you know, we want to compute average of, you know, this row plus one row before that and one row after that. Similarly, when we are on fourth row, we want to compute average of the current row plus one row before it and one row after that. Now, the way we achieve that, let's actually remove this partition by clause to keep things simple. Let's do the same thing for this last. Okay, now here unbounded preceding means the window starts at the first row within the result set, but that's not what we want. We want, you know, one row from the current row, right? So one preceding and one following. So from the current row, one row preceding and one row following. Similarly, let's do the same thing for sum and count. So now this is going to do what we want. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's execute this and see what we get. Now look at the count. Now this is the first row. Before this row we don't have any row. So count of um, that row 
we don't have anything before so 0 after that we have 1 so we get 2 so count then is for every other row it's going to be 3 except for the last row because for the last row we have one row before it but we don't have any row after that now if you look at average it's going to be interesting so for the first row look at that and now we don't have any row before that one row after that so it's only going to take average of these two thousand plus two thousand three thousand divided by two fifteen hundred when it comes to the second row two plus three five five plus one six six divided by three two okay so it's doing what we want and the same is true for sum now if you want to do it for like two rows preceding and two rows following simply change that number to two and you get what you want so we have more control and flexibility by using this um, you know rows or range clause thank you for listening and have a great day